Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and today we're doing a true story about Tracy Lords and Slash. Now this is a story that some people have asked me to do and this is going to be probably one of the shorter stories since there isn't a ton of information about this. But let's first start about who is Tracy Lords. Now she's got an interesting history that maybe a lot of people don't know. So back in the 1980s, in the early 80s, she was one of the most sought after porn actresses in the industry. But what a lot of people don't know is that law enforcement ended up getting involved in her career. So it was discovered that at the age of 15, she had taken part in pornographic films. And when law enforcement discovered that pornographers were distributing and selling images and films taken of her when she was a minor, it led to prosecutions and court cases that changed the pornography industry in the United States, in addition to bans on all but one of her adult films. So when Tracy Lords turned 18, she ended up leaving the porn industry and she enrolled in Lee Strasberg Theater Institute, where she studied method acting with the intention of becoming a mainstream actress. Now she's got a lot of different acting credits on mainstream TV shows including MacGyver, Married with Children, Tales from the Crypt, Roseanne, Melrose Place, Profiler, First Wave, Gilmore Girls, and Will and Grace. She's also appeared in films such as Skinner, Virtuosity, Blade, Zack and Miri Make a Porno, and the most recently Ex Excision. And in 1995 she ended up becoming a singer as well when she released her debut studio album, A Thousand Fires. So it was released through Radioactive Records, and the album remains her only full-length music release to date. Now upon its release, A Thousand Fires received generally positive reviews from music critics. All Music gave it 3 out of 5 stars, calling it a competent exercise in techno, at the same time criticizing Lord's vocals as being thin, thin and not having much range, but it also remarked that she does have a forceful and distinctive personality, which gives the co record a cohesive sound. It was also rumored on one of the My GNR forum posts that Slash played on the record as well. Some people think the song Love Never Dies was featuring Slash on guitar. Now let's turn to Slash's autobiography and see what he had to say about Tracy Lords. So it came out in 2007 and he briefly mentioned Tracy Lords. So in his book he said, I went through an interesting succession of girlfriends during a long and nightmarish obsession with heroin that lasted from 1989 through 1991. Just a handful that I'd see over my place each on different nights. At some point during those months, my manager had the brilliant of idea had the brilliant idea of having me present some award to someone or other at the MTV Video Music Awards. I can't remember who we gave it to, but my co-presenter was Tracy Lords, the porn star. So we met backstage and then we started dating immediately. I was mildly famous, I was infamous, but I was still stuck in a raggedy, heathen mentality in terms of the quality of my life. At the same time, I could have had $15 million in the bank, but I wouldn't have changed my lifestyle at all. I didn't have a car. I was happy to have a one-room apartment that looked like a generic hotel room and needed nothing more. That was where my head was at. At the same time, I knew how to be a gentleman, which is entirely what Tracy Lords expected on a date, so somehow we hit it off. So Slash went on to say, Tracy didn't want any part of being seen in public with me. If we ever went anywhere that anyone might be paying attention, she'd put me through the stupid ordeal where I'd have to come in after her and meet her inside as if by accident. Obviously, I was recognizable, so she always insisted that we scoot in some back alley entrance. From what I understood, she wanted to keep a low profile because she didn't want to be exposed as a groupie slut or one of the porno chicks that guys like me dated. I was never one of those guys who was judgmental about that stuff and never understood those who were. In fact, the only reason I knew her was because I'd seen her in a movie where she went, was bent over holding her ankles and she looked amazing. I truly appreciated that, so I figured everyone else appreciated that too. I didn't get her whole charade at all. So here's the clip from the MTV Awards of Slash and Tracy Lords coming out and accepting a word on behalf of Guns N' Roses. I'm Tracy Lords. And I'm Slash. And Guns N' Roses is very happy to have this. So in October of 2007, around the time that Slash's book came out, he revealed that things didn't end up working out with Tracy Lords. In fact, he said he missed, uh, the, missed out on betting the famous porn star girlfriend. So according to an interview that the Velvet Revolver star gave, he said he briefly dated Lords in 1989 at the height of his fame as a guitarist for Guns N' Roses, but
but turned her off with his epic drug use. So in his forthcoming autobiography, Slash revealed he thought his luck uh, was in when girlfriend invited herself over to his apartment, but rather than cleaning up, he took crack cocaine with a pal and zoned out. He writes, by the time Tracy showed up, pal West, Arkeen, and I were crawling around on the carpet looking for rocks. We were a mess. Tracy Lords left, never to return. After Slash's pal waved a copy of the porn film New Wave Hookers, a movie in which Tracy Lords starred in, he waved the movie in front of her and Slash added he was so high that he thought nothing of going over to my bookshelves, retrieving New Wave hookers, pointing to the cover and saying, that's you, isn't it? Slash admits the moment wrecked his chances of betting the actress. He said, I'd seen her in this movie where she was bent over holding her ankles and she looked amazing. It was very entertaining, but somehow of a tease because Tracy and I hadn't slept together. But things weren't all bad for Slash. Around the same time, he gave an interview where he said he was tired of dating porn stars. So Slash said he was tired of dating porn stars because the sex is too exhibitionist. And at that time, the 42-year-old rocker had previously dated a number of porn stars and famously missed out betting X-rated actress Tracy Lords because he was too high on crack. But he admits life in the bedroom can become repetitive. He says, The sex with a porn star is great and I'm very uninhibited. The lows were getting too much of the same thing. It starts to feel like you're making a movie every time you have sex. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the like button and share this video as well. And also follow us on gnrcentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. And subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. You guys can also go support us on Patreon if you want to get exclusive behind the scenes stuff. And see us continue to make videos just like this. Take care.